Brothers Gao and Song, now let me raise a question. Mm. You say that the Lord Jesus has already arrived. He's Almighty God, and He's doing the work of judgment. Is that true? Right. Indeed. I think this can't be. We've always maintained that God's words and work are contained in the Bible, and that they don't exist outside the Bible. Indeed. Amen. We believe that belief in the Lord can't stray from the Bible. Through the Bible, we'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Is anything wrong with this understanding? Please commune with us. Elder Liu is right. God's words and work are within the Bible. Amen. Amen. It's simply impossible for God to speak beyond the Bible. The Bible contains the fullness of God's salvation. The Bible is the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our belief is based on the Bible. Straying from it is a betrayal of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you not accept all this as fact? That's right. The words and work of God are all contained within the Bible. No matter what happens, we must exalt and uphold the Bible. Amen. Amen. Isn't that so? Right. right. Hmm. The Bible is all we need to follow. Amen. Amen. He's wrong. What we should exalt is God. How come it is the Bible? Everyone, you say that all God's words and work are within the Bible, and that it contains God's full salvation, and that God's words and work will not appear outside the Bible. The religious world believes this. It seems no one can truly ascertain if this view is valid. In the past, we treated all issues according to the Bible. Let me ask, does this religious world's view accord with the Bible or with God's word? No. no. Lord Jesus never said anything like that in the Bible, nor did the Holy Spirit ever speak so. So where does this idea come from, you may ask? Yes, where does it come from? Well, all right, let's hear it. So where does it come from? Right, let's hear it. Hmm. Okay, this isn't hard to explain. It can be said with certainty that this notion comes from man's imagination. Right. The conception and imagination. Why do I say this? We all know both testaments of the Bible record two stages of God's work. As for God's words and work during the age of law and the age of grace, do any dare say the Bible records all? No. no. Do any dare say all God's words delivered through prophets in the age of law and all of the Lord Jesus' words in the age of grace are in the Bible? No, I no, don't. I wouldn't I would. dare. I wouldn't dare. Actually, you're all well aware that many of Lord Jesus' words are not recorded in the Bible. Right. Right. The words of Lord Jesus within the Bible are just the tip of the iceberg. Many of the prophets' books in the age of law are also not included in the Bible. This is commonly acknowledged. How could you say all God's words and work are recorded within the Bible? Does this not contradict all fact? In this sense, are you not liars? It is resisting God to lie. Lord Jesus foretold he would come again. How could the returned Lord Jesus' words be recorded in the Bible ahead of time? That's impossible. Right, impossible. We should be very clear. The Bible is a record of God's work performed in the past. Many years since the writing of the Old Testament, Lord Jesus did the work of redemption during the Age of Grace. Yes. Yes. Tell me now, would the Lord Jesus' words automatically get written down? No, no it's, it's not possible. possible. No way. That's right. That would be impossible. God's words and work 
had to be compiled before they could be in the Bible. Amen. Amen. That does make sense. In the last days, Almighty God has come to do judgment starting from God's house and has expressed truths to save mankind. Could these truths automatically appear in the Bible? Impossible. The Church of Almighty God compiles all truths Almighty God expresses into the Bible of the Age of Kingdom. The Word appears in the flesh. This Bible of the Age of Kingdom contains only the expression of God with none of man's words inside. Amen. We say, the Word appears in the flesh is the eternal way of life given by God in the last days. Amen. 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 Thank God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. This is the precious treasure God has bestowed us. The view that God's words and work are all within the Bible and that God's words and work won't appear elsewhere is not true, absurd, and completely the product of man's notions and imaginations. Amen. Amen. Do we all agree with these facts? Indeed. Yes, it's all true. Yes. They spoke well. They are aligned with fact. I'm reminded of the Gospel of John. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the Word itself could not contain the books that should be written. This Bible passage clearly states that it doesn't contain all of Lord Jesus' words and work. The Bible's actually a very limited account. How could we say that all of God's words and work are within the Bible? That's right. Therefore, what is this but a barefaced lie? Yes, that's right. That's right. The pastor and elders view that God's word is only in the Bible just doesn't hold up. Indeed. Let's read from Almighty God's words to further clarify. Okay. okay. Please turn to page 984. Almighty God says, All that is recorded within the Bible is limited and unable to represent all the work of God. The four Gospels have fewer than 100 chapters altogether in which are written a finite number of happenings, such as Jesus cursing the fig tree, Peter's three denials of the Lord, Jesus appearing to the disciples following his crucifixion and resurrection, teaching about fasting, teaching about prayer, teaching about divorce, the birth and genealogy of Jesus, Jesus' appointment of the disciples, and so forth. These are but a few writings yet man values them as treasures, even verifying the work of today against them. They even believe that Jesus only did so much in the time after his birth. It is as if they believe God can only do this much, that there can be no further work. Is this not ludicrous? Now page 1274. I will read. Mm, good. At the time, Jesus only spoke to his disciples a series of sermons in the Age of Grace, such as how to practice, how to gather together, how to ask in prayer, how to treat others, and so forth. The work he carried out was that of the Age of Grace, and he expounded only on how the disciples and those who followed him ought to practice. He did only the work of the Age of Grace and none of the last days. The work of God in each age has clear boundaries. He does only the work of the current age and never does he carry out the next stage of work in advance. Only in this way can his representative work of each age be brought to the fore. Jesus had spoken only of the signs of the last days, of how to be patient and how to be saved, how to repent and confess, as well as how to bear the cross and endure suffering. Never did he speak of what man in the last days should enter into or how to seek to satisfy God's will. As such, would it not be an act of fallacy to search within the Bible for God's work of the last days? What can you discern merely holding the Bible in your hands? Be it an interpreter of the Bible or a preacher, who can foreknow the work of today? 
If you wish to see the work of the Age of Law and to see how the Israelites followed the way of Jehovah, then you must read the Old Testament. If you wish to understand the work of the Age of Grace, then you must read the New Testament. But how do you see the work of the last days? You must accept the leadership of the God of today and enter into the work of today. For this is the new work, and no one has previously recorded it in the Bible. The work of today is a path that man has never walked and a way that no one has ever seen. It is work that has never been done before. It is God's latest work on earth. Who could have recorded every single bit of today's work without omission in advance? Who could record this mightier, wiser work that defies convention in the moldy old book? The work of today is not history. And as such, if you wish to walk the new path of today, then you must depart from the Bible. You must go beyond the books of prophecy or history in the Bible. Only then will you be able to walk the new path properly, and only then will you be able to enter into the new realm and the new work. Amen. Amen. Thanks, be Thanks be to God. Be to God. Yes, that's God. right. Yes, that's right. The understanding. Almighty God's word is completely in line with facts. The Bible is just a record of God's word and work in the age of law and the age of grace. Right. The words and work of God in the last days couldn't be written in advance. Right, right. right. We used to claim all God's words and work were only within the Bible. This doesn't line up with the fact of God's work. It's, it's true. true. Yes, and if we don't seek and study the work of God during the last days and refuse to accept the return of the Lord Jesus, we'll be forsaken by God. That's right. 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 This fulfills the Lord Jesus' words. I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Yes. yes. If we don't welcome the Lord when he comes, are we not betraying him? How does adhering to the Bible and the Lord's name constitute betrayal? I don't agree with your views. How many times have pastors and elders said, we mustn't ever forsake the Bible in our faith. Only by adhering to the Bible may we enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. How could this be wrong? Right. Pastors and elders can't be wrong. Why do you always listen to pastors and elders? You claim only through the Bible may we enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me ask, is there any evidence of this in the Bible? Did Lord Jesus ever say this? Did the Holy Spirit ever say this? So where does this idea even come from? That's right. That's right. There's, There's no evidence. evidence. There is a grave problem with this idea. The Bible was compiled by man and not by God. Given this, naturally some things were left out and errors were made. Man had not received God's salvation and perfection and so lacked the truth. Man was not able to tell what issued from God and what was from man. They were even less able to recognize deviations in the experienced testimonies of men. Right. right. And so, lacking truth and discernment, man often selected what he liked according to his imagination and left out that which issued from God but did not align with his own thinking. He was prone to mistakes. So, inevitably, man made mistakes while compiling the Bible. If our faith is based solely on the Bible, how can we know we'll enter the kingdom of heaven? Tell me now, am I right? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. No one can ensure that. Absolutely. You say it well. The Lord Jesus has never said that only through the Bible can man enter God's kingdom. As for entrance into his kingdom, he said, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus put it clearly. 
Only those that do the will of the Heavenly Father shall enter God's kingdom. To those who say only by clinging to the Bible may we enter God's kingdom, let me ask, does it hearing to it mean doing the Heavenly Father's will? Can the Bible stand in for the work of the Holy Spirit? No. Without the work of the Holy Spirit, can man achieve salvation? There's no way. It's true. Can the Bible alone cleanse man's corrupt disposition? Can the Bible change his life disposition? By understanding the Bible alone, can man know God? No way, right? As everyone knows, the Pharisees understood the Bible. But why did they nail Lord Jesus to the cross? When the Lord Jesus came, why did he curse the Pharisees, those great Bible interpreters? Does clinging to the Bible mean you know God's voice? Does it mean you've been raptured before God's throne? Does it bring you to the Feast of the Lamb? Do you have an answer for these questions? No, we've never thought about that. The Lord Jesus said, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. Amen. You substitute the Bible for the Lord and the words and work of his return. Isn't that a betrayal of the Lord? Are you a servant of the Lord or a servant to the Bible? Are you serving the Lord or serving the Bible? If you don't grasp the relationship between them, how do you ever expect to know him? You put blind faith in the Bible to bring eternal life, and yet you fail to obey and worship the Lord. Is this not the path the Pharisees walked? It sure is. It definitely is. Yes, just like the Pharisees. Didn't the Pharisees all worship the Bible, not the Lord? Did they not nail the Lord to the cross, incurring curses of the Lord? This is fact. There's no denying it. Yet you say, through the Bible, you'll enter God's kingdom. Is this not just absurd? Indeed it is. You have served for years as elder and pastor, yet still hold such absurd views. How are you any different from those hypocritical Pharisees? Indeed. Aren't they the right hypocritical Pharisees? You've believed for years and still don't understand. Right. After years of faith, man should know the Lord's will. His return is to deliver all saints to his kingdom. Amen. As to how the Lord delivers the saints, no one is quite sure. The Lord Jesus has said, The wise virgins who hear the bridegroom's voice shall go with the Lord to the feast. Amen. Amen. This proves that when the Lord comes again during the last days, those who have heard his voice and have gone with him to the feast shall be taken into his kingdom. Amen. Those who hear the voice of the Lord are indeed the most blessed. Amen. Yes, we are truly blessed. Thanks be to God. Does knowing the Bible by heart mean that one can recognize the Lord's voice? No, it doesn't. It certainly does not. Does knowing it by heart mean one knows the Lord's voice? No. Right. The Pharisees memorized and even interpreted it. Yet they still nailed him to the cross. What went wrong? Thus, it's clear. Only those who love truth and can hear God's voice will welcome the Lord. Amen. And receive life from him. Only they shall be brought to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thanks. Thank God. Thanks Thank God. God. Praise the Lord. To God. It truly is as you've said. Before, we blindly followed pastors and elders and confined the work of God within the Bible. We thought that as long as we adhere to the Bible, 
we would enter into the kingdom of heaven, never bothering to seek the true way, and unaware of how to search for the words of the Holy Spirit spoken to the churches. How do we think we'd see God's appearance? That's right. The worst of it is, I even followed them in resisting Almighty God's work of the last days. By following pastors and elders, I opposed God, just as the Pharisees once Indeed, did. Indeed, that's right. Yes. We were all so blind, so ignorant. Yes. Only through your fellowship did I see that following the footsteps of God's work is how we might receive salvation. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. If we just accept the Bible and not the work of God in the last days, then we'll be abandoned. Right. How do we expect to be purified and receive salvation? That is all true. It's been years that we've been listening to pastor's interpretation of the Bible, yet received little truth. That's right. right. We believed all God's words and work are within the Bible and that by adhering to it, we'd enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, we rejected the work of God in the last days. Thinking back, we're lucky God didn't abandon us. 